Hey everybody, Mike here from Trail7, and I'm here to show you a few awesome new Alpine head unit bundles that we've put together for your Jeep 2007 to 2018 Wrangler JK. We have the Alpine ILX 507, we have the Alpine ILX F509, and the Alpine ILX F511. Now all three of these head units have the same specifications. They all have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they also all have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. They all have HD screens. They all have HD music with a Tidal app that is a paid subscription. They all have a 13-band parametric EQ. They all have four volt power outputs for adding amplifiers. They all have two camera inputs. So you can have a front camera, you can have a backup camera. It defaults to a backup camera, or you can put a front camera, side camera, or anywhere you want to go. They all have plug and play connections for Alpine's dash camera, the DVR320. So they pretty much all have the same features. Now when you receive your bundle from us, you're gonna receive your bundle just as you see it on the table here. Everything is gonna be connected. Everything is gonna be taped. Everything is gonna be marked. The Maestro module is gonna be flashed and attached to the module. Everything is gonna come just as you see it here ready for an easy plug and play install. So that's how you're gonna receive it from us, ready to install. Now the biggest difference obviously is just the screen size. The 507 has a seven inch screen, the F509 and the F511, the F stands for floating. So these screens do float a little bit out from the dash. It's gonna stick out maybe about an, a half an inch to an inch or so. It's fully adjustable. You can tilt the screen up, down. You can raise the screen up and down and we'll show you how we've been able to install it to where it contours really nice and well with the dash. So let's go ahead and show you how easy these are to install. There's only a couple of tools that you'll need. For one, a socket, a seven millimeter socket, a pair of needle nose pliers. We'll need that to install the 509 screen, the 511 screen, a panel removal tool, I recommend a magnetic screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and also I recommend a magnet stick. There's probably gonna be a screw or two that drops into the center console and you wanna be able to get those out of there. Now, of course, the part of any installation is unboxing the head unit, attaching all the cabling, reading the instructions, what cabling is needed, et cetera, et cetera, what cabling goes where. We've taken all of that away for you. When you receive it, everything is attached just like I showed before. So your first step on this is just taking it out of the box. It's ready to go in. So after that, of course, we need to disassemble the dashboard. So I'm gonna show you a clip from a prior video where we disassemble the dash and the JK, and also another clip where we install the GPS cable, the microphone wire, and the OBD2 cable. And then we'll come back and show you the install. And that starts with removal of this lower dash panel. So it, it's one piece under here, and if you put your fingers right underneath the steering column, you can just pull straight at you and lower all the way down and slide it out towards you. Go ahead and set this piece aside. Behind the panel, there are two screws they need to remove. One is here and one is here. With a 932nd socket wrench, we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Hey, recommendation on all of these screws that you take out from your dash, go ahead and drop them in your cup holder. We're of course gonna need those for reassembly. There's one more on the dashboard here. There's a total of four of these screws, two under the dash, one up on top here, and there's one behind the window switches. Recommend a, a panel remover right underneath the window switch panel. It pops right out. Behind here, it's a two-way lock. Push that up, lock that down, and it'll pull right out. After you disconnect that, go ahead and store that in the cup holder. And then there you'll find the fourth screw to install. After that, that's out, you're ready to remove the full dash panel. Recommend go ahead and lowering your steering wheel all the way down. Makes it a lot easier to navigate around. And you can reach up on the left side behind the speaker lever and right up front here and you'll see it pulls right out. Now that we have the dash apart, you'll see there are four screws surrounding the stock head unit. 
once you have the screws out, to get this out, just pull it straight out at you. A little bit of wiggling, and it'll come right out. Once this is out, the head unit has four factory connectors. And these will pop right out with the pressing in the tab, the safety lock tab in the back. There you go. All right, the stock unit is out. The next part that needs to happen here is to remove this lower panel. What a recommendation though is to make it easier to put, go ahead and put the vehicle into drive. So with that, I'm gonna put the parking brake on, turn the auxiliary on, and put it into drive. So the reason for that is to remove this panel here. And similar to the panel that's under the dashboard, just pull the top tabs straight out. There's a U-Connect box that not all are equipped with, equipped with stock. However, if yours is, you're gonna want to remove a cable that's connected to that. Again, with the 932nd tool, uh, socket wrench, there are two screws mounting the Uconnect box in here. One's on the bottom and one's up top. What I recommend for this bottom piece, there's a little screw in here that's a little hard to reach. What I recommend is having a magnet strip or a pair of small needle nose pliers if that screw falls in there, which I'm sure it will. I'll be able to get that out with my little magnet stick here. All right, so the next step is obviously installation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the microphone, the GPS antenna, and the OBD connection. So the microphone, we're gonna set right on top of the steering wheel here. That's our preferred option uh, with the top off, the doors off. We've had good experience with it sitting on top here without any interference of the wind. However, that cable is long enough to where if you wanna run the microphone and install it up here, you can. And you can run the wire along the trim piece um, if you want to run the microphone over here, you can install it anywhere you want to. We just find that it, it sits really well here. It's easy to install there and we have good experience in other applications. So I'm going to show you how to install it right here. The GPS antenna, we're just going to go ahead and mount this right here. Again, there's other applications that you can install this. The, the wire is plenty long enough to where if you want to run it along the trim piece and up along the trim, you can install it back here if you like. Um, again, we in other applications, we have good experience and good results with just mounting it right to the top here. So I'll show you how to do that. And the OBD connection, which is important to retain and to have all of your gauge cluster instruments show up on the, on the screen. Um, that wire is going to run along the dash here and it's going to run down in the trim. And then your OBD connection is going to connect, of course, to your OBD port down here at the footwell. So we're going to show you all of that, install the head unit. Let's get on with the installation now. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the OBD2. Go ahead and remove the side panel. It's already exposed here, you can just push it right out. And you can feed the wire up through the bottom. Just go ahead and grab the other side, pull it right up. You can feed it right inside here. Come right across the top of the air vent and continue to feed right across here. Let's go ahead and get this plugged in to the OBD port down here. There you go. One thing I'll mention about the OBD, because we do receive a lot of questions that, um, what if I'm gonna you know, install a tuner or if I need to access the OBD for gauges or for, for codes or anything like that, you can disconnect the OBD and attach the, any other module you want to attach to it and you can reconnect the OBD. It's not gonna disrupt anything as far as your settings are concerned. Of course, you won't have your gauge clusters on display but you can reattach it and disconnect as many times you like to, and it's not gonna cause any, any disruptment of your, of your settings. You can also get a splitter down there if you wanted to. So if you had uh, some device that you needed to run full time, you know, I know there's some insurance companies that have uh, an OBD sensor that plugs in there. You can get a splitter and you can run the other adapter as well as this adapter side by side in the splitter. So it's gonna run through this little channel right here. The wire's gonna run right through there and it's gonna come out the other side. You'll probably see my finger stick through just like that. And there you go. The OBD is ran over on the side here. Let's go ahead and get this microphone installed. I'm gonna mount it right on top of the steering wheel. And you're gonna run inside this channel here and you're gonna pick it up right here. Go ahead and pull all the slack through. I'll probably provided these little double-sided sticky tapes 
to put on the microphone pad. So go ahead and put this on to the microphone. When you're ready to attach it to the steering wheel or wherever you do, peel this side off. If you're going to put it in the steering wheel, don't do that yet. Just let this dangle down a little bit because we want to put the dash piece on first before we attach the microphone or else the microphone will be in the way of the dash piece. So if you're going to put it on the steering wheel, go ahead and just let this dangle down and we'll install this after we put the dash piece as, as a final attachment. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the GPS antenna. Uh, again, this wire is long enough that if you want to install it above the roll bar here, you can. Alpine does provide a, uh, a sticky, like a little metal tab here that you can attach to there if you feel like going that route. And we have you know great experience from installing GPS antennas right above the dash here. So we're gonna go ahead and install that there. There's a rubber seal in between the, um, the windshield and the dashboard here. You're gonna push that rubber seal aside and you'll see uh, there's a channel that goes right through. So you can feed it through this side. Just push down. And you can see the wire from this side very clearly pop down and you can just pull it right through. Go ahead and leave the GPS antenna up here also. There's a, a piece of sticky tape on the side, on the back of this. Um, I wouldn't peel it off yet. Also, I would wait till the dash is in. You can attach this piece as well as the microphone, but that's where it's gonna sit. And you can just leave this dangling and we can clean that up at the end when we do all the wire management. Um, so now everything is prepped, ready to go. The OBD is in, the microphone is in, the GPS is in. Let's go ahead and now install the head unit. All right, everybody, we are back. The dash has been disassembled. The mic wire has been ran. The GPS wire has been ran. The OBD wire has been ran. Something I wanted to talk about real quick was the Uconnect. When you are disconnecting the Uconnect, make sure that you disconnect it completely. Like it needs to come out of the Jeep completely. Do not leave any of the connectors attached to it. That'll cause interference with the phones and the Apple or the Android with the phone connection. So make sure it's removed completely. Now you can mount this back into the spot just in case you want to hang on to it. So if you do want to go back to um, using Uconnect, then you have it. I'm just going to set it aside, right? Something else I want to mention here is that this dash has been cut because we did a different head unit install that requires for you to cut this bar across. When you take yours out, you're gonna see a, a bar, a piece of plastic, a trim piece that runs across here. You don't need to cut that out for the installation. However, of course, it makes it easier to remove it. You don't need to do that at all. You may need to trim the very bottom of that bar in case if your slide years in, and these little tabs here get in the way of that, you may need to shave a little tiny piece of that bar off the bottom, but as far as removing it completely, you don't need to do, again, if you do decide to do it, it obviously doesn't cause any problems at all, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the install here. So you have two USB cables connected to the head unit. So this one here is labeled as for charge. This has the beige connector on it, and this one here is labeled Android Auto, on the other side of it, it says Apple CarPlay, and this is the black connector on it. This wire here, both of these wires are connected, attached, fixed to the head unit. The black one, we're gonna run through the console here, and we're gonna poke this out to the back of the glove box, so that way you can access this for your wired Apple and wired Android connections. And then we're gonna route the charging USB down the console here, and connect it into the Uconnect connection that came out of the Uconnect. So let's go ahead and route that. There's this metal bracket. What I've done is I make sure all of the wires come through that metal bracket, as you can see there. So go ahead and route this wire behind the bottom portion of the metal bracket, like so. And you can just reach up and, and pull it through so this gray connector is what was removed from the bottom of the Uconnect. You're gonna attach these two connectors together. And there you go. That's how that's connected, just like that. So now with that in place, we can go ahead and put our control panel back away now. Let's go ahead and reconnect the connections. 
making sure that you connect them back in the same exact spot that they came out. If you do connect this back in, you reattach this and you find that your controls don't work, the, either the, uh, the air controls don't work or the seat warmer doesn't work or the flashers don't work or something like that, that just means that one of the connectors is not in the right spot. So you took it apart, it's just doing the same thing backwards. A connector into there. This connector goes into here. The connector that was, of course, attached to the bottom of the U-Connect doesn't get used. Push this back into place. Just like so. Now we can put the Jeep back into park and we can take the keys out of the ignition. So that part is done. That part is complete. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my seat forward a little bit here so I can use my knee to rest the head unit. And I do want to go over a couple of the connectors here just so you can see what the head unit has on it, what it comes with, how we set it up. This RCA harness, if you're not running amplifiers, if you don't have them now, we attach this to it, but you can go ahead and disconnect it. Unless you want to leave it attached. We're going to disconnect it, just makes it easier for the install so we don't have an extra wire harness that we have to try to navigate through. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. That just unclips from right here. Something else I want to identify here is, as I mentioned earlier, the Alpine head units come plug and play and they come set up for Alpine cameras, specifically Alpine cameras. You can of course attach a non-Alpine camera, but connecting an Alpine camera is just so much easier because they're identified, they're super easy, they're plug and play, etc. So just to show you on here, this is the rear camera connector. It's identified as rear camera. The bundle comes with this RCA attached to it. Remove the RCA if you have an Alpine rear camera because the Alpine rear camera uses this clip and doesn't use an RCA. If you have a non-Alpine rear camera, you're going to want to leave that connector attached because you're going to need this RCA to connect your camera to. Your backup camera will have a yellow RCA, a male RCA, that you're going to connect into this. But since we have an Alpine camera, we can remove this, and I'll show you how to install the Alpine rear camera. So I just wanted to show this to you. This is labeled rear camera. This cable is labeled drive recorder in. As I mentioned earlier, if you have a DVR, the Alpine DVR connects right directly into here. This wire here is labeled as front camera, which is again, if you have an Alpine front camera, it plugs right into that. On this harness over here, what you're going to need for this install is this wire right here, which has a little tag on it that says mic in. This wire here, this is attached to the Alpine head unit, and this comes with this connector attached, and this is for the AM FM. Just note that it may not always be this turquoise blue color. We've seen them where they're black. We've seen them where a little bit green. The one that we're using here just happens to be this turquoise color. This here is the main harness and the main connector. This is the OBD wire. And that's gonna plug into the OBD wire that we ran earlier. Point something else out here, if you do have amplifiers, the wiring harness has this little blue wire here. That's your remote turn on. So it's, it calls it out, it says amp turn on on the wire here. So from your amplifier, if you have a remote turn on wire, you're gonna run that, you're gonna pull this off and you're gonna tap that into this blue wire here. All right, one more port to identify here on the head unit itself is the GPS port. It's this port right here. So the GPS antenna is gonna plug right into that port right there on the head unit. Everything else connects into the wiring harness. Just that one is gonna connect into the port here. All right, now let's go ahead and get started with our connections. 
So the connection that we're going to run now is the wire for the Apple wired and for the Android wired connection. So what we're going to do is we're going to route that through the console area here and we're just going to feed it right through to where it sticks out right where my finger is. I'm going to go right back here and literally if I'm sitting here and I look down, I can see the light coming through. There is a little channel alleyway where you can see right in there. It's, it's probably the easiest wire to run. So literally, you just push it right through. And like I said, so here it is here, coming through. And you just pull it right through. And I mean so much to where, if I were to stick my hand in here, you can see my finger sticking out there. So there is a clear little path right through. So go ahead and pull this all the way through. I'm just gonna leave this in the glove box and that you can just access for wired connections if you ever decide that you wanna do that. There you go. Something else I wanna do, just because it's a long wire and I wanna just manage it a little bit before we get started with the rest of the connections here, let's go ahead and clean up our uh, USB charging cable here. So down in the middle, there's a little cavity down below here. here. Let's get these wires out of the way. And as I did mention, this Jeep has a backup camera already. So those are the wires for that. Let's get those out of the way. So as I was gonna say, let's go ahead and just pull this charging wire through here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little rubber band or something, and I'm just gonna strap it around that. just to tidy that up. And I'm gonna push this down into the bottom area just to get it out of the way. All right, now let's go ahead and get on with our connections. So let's go ahead and connect to the AM FM connector into the Jeep, which is gonna terminate into the white and red Jeep connector. Now I'll say this, this is a very firm connection just give it some good pressure, push it in there. Something to note, this mustard connector here, this is for if you have Sirius XM the module. That certainly would be an option to add the Sirius XM module to your Alpine head unit. We'll have that link on the page as well. So if the Sirius XM module was attached to this head unit, then you would connect that wire, the, the antenna off of that, right into this mustard connector here. Now our AM FM connector is attached. Let's go ahead and attach our microphone. Again, so the microphone is listed, or it's labeled here as microphone. And this is the microphone wire. This is what we ran earlier. Let's go ahead and connect that. And that's done. We can kind of tuck that to the side a little bit. Let's also go ahead and connect our GPS antenna which is this gray connector here. That's gonna connect into the port that is a part of the head unit that's going into this port here. So you're gonna connect this, just push that right in and that's where that's gonna go. Now let's connect our two cameras. So this Jeep already had an Alpine front camera. So here's the front camera as listed on the Alpine. Here's the front camera connector that's labeled on the Alpine head unit. Let's connect those both those together like so. Now I mentioned the rear camera. This JK is also equipped with an Alpine rear camera. And also on their accessories, they label it rear camera. So we're gonna go ahead and connect these two. So we have rear camera to rear camera. Now, let's go ahead and connect our main Jeep harness, which is this guy here. And this is gonna come into the Jeep connector here. Like so. 
And now we're going to connect the OBD connector. This is the wire that we ran earlier. It's a little bit short the path that we chose to run it, but nonetheless it fits, it works, it reaches. So go ahead and connect these two. This is the yellow and red wire and the yellow and red wire with two black connectors. Let's go ahead and get those. And that's it. So everything is connected. Everything is attached, ready to go. Again, this one isn't connected because we didn't select the Sirius XM module on this install. But if you do select that, then your antenna is gonna plug right into here. If your Jeep is already equipped with Sirius XM, then you'll have this antenna. If your Jeep doesn't have Sirius XM currently and you select to add the module, then you will need to install and route the new antenna that's provided for you. And that antenna can be mounted on top of the roll bar up here. Something else I wanted to mention about the roll bar and about the antenna is the GPS antenna. So we mounted it right on top of the dash here, which we have great success with. However, there are some reports that that'll interfere with your maps and it may not show you exactly uh, the location of where you're at. If you find that's the case, then you are going to have to relocate this GPS antenna. And the recommended spot for that is to mount it up on top of the roll bar back here. To get there, it's a very simple path, right? You can just follow along the dash, follow along the trim panel here, and just attach it, and it comes with a little sticky pad. You can attach it back behind there. But again, we have pretty good success with it up here. If you do run into an interference issue where you see you're not right on where your map is saying you are, if it shows you off the side of the road or something like that, then that's what it's gonna be. And you just have to relocate that. Now all the connections are already made, as I previously stated, the connections for the ILX 507, 509, and 511 are all the same. This is the chassis for the ILX F511. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in now and remount the screen and I'll show you this guy. Make sure that all of your wires tuck into the metal bracket back here. So we're just going to go ahead and put in two screws. I want to do a power cycle just to make sure that um, just to make sure that it has power before assembling the entire dash. So the screen is going to slide right underneath that metal piece, that black piece there, and press it in. So you have these little ridges on here. These little ridges are gonna face the front. So when you turn it around, there's a little hole right here and another little hole over on this side here. That's where these two clips are gonna pop into. I'm gonna set just down like that. And on this side, the same. Now let's just turn the, uh, the Jeep on real quick. And let's make sure that we have power. We have power. Now I'm gonna go ahead and button everything up. I'm gonna put the dash piece back together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to take that power strip back out to take the screen off and put the dash back together. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Now let's go ahead and install the other screws into the screen. Let's go ahead and make sure that the window control connector is open and exposed here. Make sure it's not tucked down below so when you Reinstall the dash piece, then you can, of course, connect the uh, window control knob back there. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the dash piece back together. This, of course, is just doing everything backwards. So you're going to put the single screw back on the top dash here. You're going to put the two screws back on each side of the steering column. And you're going to put the trim panel piece back together down below there. Let's go ahead and mount up our microphone. And go ahead and put the bottom trim panel piece back on. There you go, dash is back together. And we just did everything backwards, right? You put that one screw or put that one screw back on the top there, put the two screws on the each side of the steering column, and you snap back in the trim piece that was below the steering column here. So let's go ahead and get the screen attached there and I'll show you the method of, of attaching the screen. There are six screws to hold the screen on. There's two large screws on each side, and then there's two small screws on the top that hold the final trim piece in, is what adds up holding that little power bridge clip in as well. Right after the screen goes in, you have to put the screws in. There's two on each side.
Now let's go ahead and put the plastic piece in. This bezel piece wraps around the top here, which is a pretty tight fit. There we go. We have the ILX F511 installed into the Jeep JK. Now I'm going to do a demonstration to show you a couple of the really neat features this thing has. Let's see what it offers. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's first get our phone connected. I'm using Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are both grayed out. However, you can still push the button. So push Apple CarPlay. Goes M tracks his phone. Let's go ahead and turn Bluetooth on on the phone. Hit connect. Make sure that Apple CarPlay is checked here. Hit OK. On your phone, it says Bluetooth pairing. Hit pair. Allow contacts. And we're connected. Now let's go back to the home screen. Apple CarPlay is now bold. And there you go. We're going home. You can press, I have it connected to Pandora. Here's the apps. And of course, any of the other apps you have. Here's the Alpine app. Let's go back here. Let's show you the camera connections. So Alpine safety features, you have to have the parking brake engaged in order for the settings to um, be bold in order for you to access the settings. So let's go ahead and engage the parking brake. You see it flashed, push setup. If for some reason your parking brake doesn't engage or when you engage the parking brake, if it doesn't uh, trigger the settings, you'll have to go into the FM function, just hit FM and then engage the parking brake twice and the settings will pop up, which basically is that's telling you is that you need to do a software update. So let's go to function. So dash cam, if you had a dash camera like we do here in this JK, we didn't show you how to do the installation and the connectivity here. We do have a full install video of the Alpine DVR, the 320. This is fully integratable here, fully plug and play. So let's connect our cameras. So the reverse camera that's automatically set up for camera one is reverse camera. It's automatically default to that. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Camera two gives you options, whether it's front, side, other, or camera selector, if you want to select one, if you wanted to change the defaults around. This one, we have a front camera installed. So hit front. And now let's go back, back to the main page. And there's a camera button down here in the bottom. You can push camera, and there's the rear camera. You can push camera again. And there's the front camera. The cameras, of course, will, the rear camera, of course, will work when you put the Jeep into reverse. Here we go. And here, I'll walk you through a couple of the other settings on here. Audio settings. So here's your main audio settings. Here's your EQ. As I said, it has a 13 bar parametric EQ. Your crossovers, your time correction. So you can really dial this in and customize your audio. It's a beautiful 11 inch screen. The 509 has a nine inch screen. It's a little bit smaller. Um, you can tilt this screen forward, backward. This screen can go up and down as well. This is about two from the top, so it can still go down a little bit further. If you want it to higher, it has plenty of room to go up. And of course it can tilt uh, top to bottom as well. So you can adjust it a little bit further, just at whatever works for you. Thanks a lot for joining us today for the Alpine plug and play bundle into your Jeep JK. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, if you guys need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We love hearing from you guys. If you'd like to pick up your Alpine ILX 509, F509, the F is floating, the F509 or the F511 for your Jeep JK, please visit us at www.trail7.com. And until next time, see you out there.